Okay, so Dr. Smith here. Um, I'm at home now, and I'm going to, uh, you know, take some of my uh, otherwise exciting weekend time to, uh, oh, to finish up this uh, this review thing for you guys. So let's see. Um, let's figure below. We've got a whoop. Hang on. Oh, right. Hold on. Uh, let's see. I turn the touchpad off now. Okay, now we're in business. All right, so um, we've got this this setup here where we've got two blocks, and they are uh, attached to this cable, and they've got these different masses, and they're released, and we want to know how long it takes before B falls this this distance H, which we said is four meters, and smacks into the ground there. So um, I'll start first. Uh, one thing you got to know when you're doing these problems is what the relationship is between the acceleration of B and the acceleration of A. And it's not quite uh, as obvious as it sometimes is. Often, when we have um, you know block A going to the right, and we have block B going down. They're connected by a cable like this. Their accelerations will have the same magnitude. They'll just point in different directions. But um, what's happening here is slightly different because rather than just having a simple cable pulley, you know, uh, with a single pulley, we have two two pulleys, and one of the pulleys is attached to block A. So um, let me show you, let's say this is cable section one, this is section two, and this is section three, okay? So let's label them that way. Now suppose block A moves one meter to the left. So A goes, I'm sorry, not to the left, to the right. A goes 1.0 meters to the right, okay? Then the change in the length of one, okay, delta L1 would be, well, it would get shorter by one meter. Whoops, not. 10, but uh, wait, 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 wait. no, that's not right. Okay, uh, 1.0 meters, negative 1.0 meters. Length of section 2 would also decrease by 1.0 meters. And so the length of section 3 would be would change by what? Well, the thing is, the total length of the cable has to stay the same, right? So these three lengths have to add up to zero. Which means then three must get whoops must get bigger by 2.0 meters. So <clears throat> basically, what you can say is if A moves some distance to the right, B moves twice that distance down, and that same relationship will translate into acceleration, um, well, translate to velocity and then also to acceleration. So B's acceleration will actually be twice the magnitude of A's. So, sorry the, the pen is moving around a little. Um, Sydney, our cat, is sitting on my lap, and she's she's desperate for attention, so she's sort of trying to, um, you know, make herself as, as inconvenient as possible. So if you see any extraneous marks appearing like that one, that's, uh, well, it's somebody with Sydney nudging me. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, so to set this up, uh, what I'm going to do is use a little trick where um, you set up the uh, coordinate systems for each block in such a way that the both blocks will accelerate in the positive x direction um, at the same time. And wow, what the hell is wrong with this? Okay, let's try this over here and see if this works a little better. Okay, well, interesting. Okay, so for block A, I'm going to use an x going to the right and y going up. Sorry, I know that's a horrible, um, horrible drawing, but uh, I think that'll work. So, what forces are acting on block A? We've got uh, block A's weight, which is MA times G. We've got a normal force in the ground, call N. And then block A, we're going to include also the pulley, the right of block A, as part of block A. And it's it's you know basically massless, etc. So we don't worry about it, you know, changing the mass of the whole thing. Um, and there, the cable comes off of it twice, right? Once down here and once up here. So um, in this case, I'd say it's acceptable to write 2t, okay, as the vector uh, force, you know, from the cable. Two times whatever the tension of the cable is. And remember, this cable, no matter how convoluted the arrangement, as long as all it does is pass over simple pulleys, um, the tension will stay the same, okay? So breaking this down now, um, we're going to get, for block A, we're going to get a sum of forces equals mass of block A, times the acceleration of block A, okay? 
do -do vector. Okay, so in the x direction, x direction, we're going to have uh, 2t, so 2 times this tension pulling to the right is going to equal mass of a times acceleration of a, and in the x direction, okay? And then in the y direction, uh, we're going to have the normal force going up, we're going to have mass a times g going down, and that's going to equal mass of a times acceleration of a in the y direction, which is going to equal zero, okay? That's a little ugly looking, but we'll deal with it, okay? For block B, um, let's look at block B now. So maybe if I get this away from the computer a little bit, it'll be better. I'm going to try moving this like this. Oh, hold on, Sydney. All right. So let's try this. That's a little better. Okay. So for block B now, mostly it's better. What the hell? Come on. Why am I not drawing? Hold on a second. Mm. Okay, so now, block B, where's my damn cursor? There we go. Okay, block B, wow, that looks even worse. Okay, block B, I'm going to use coordinates that go like this. I'm going to go X going down and Y going to the right. Okay, and the reason for this, I'll show you in a second, um, but it, it's kind of neat. Um, so the forces on block B are tension and mass of B times gravity. Okay, so we're going to do a uh, sum forces thing. Okay, equals mass of B times acceleration of B. Okay, and in the x direction, that means no forces equals mass of B, B times acceleration of B in the x direction, which is zero. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the y direction I just did, actually, because I named, named them differently. Sorry, this is y. Wow, this is getting ugly. Okay. And then in the x direction, which is the vertical one I've decided. So remember I set up my coordinates here and I didn't I drew them up here, but let me draw them again. That's y and that's x. Okay, so in the x direction, um, we've got mass of b times g minus t equals mass of b times acceleration of b in the x direction. Okay. Uh, let me just write that again. You know, slightly more comfortable form. Mass of B times G minus T equals mass of B times acceleration of B in the X direction. I'm just going to call it AB. So what I'm doing here now is I'm dropping the X's from the AA, from the AB, and I'm going to drop it from the AA as well because um, I want to make the point these are only accelerating in their own X directions. And it's perfectly legal to have different... Um, different coordinate systems for different objects here. No problem. In fact, it makes it easier. And in cases where one of them is on a slope, you really want to do that. Okay, so 2t equals mass of a times acceleration of a. Okay, now we've got these two equations. I'm going to switch to purple now because red plus blue is purple. I'm going to emphasize and bring them together now. Um, but we need to figure out how to match up these accelerations. So at this point, let's see if we can move down a wee tad. Okay, and uh, we're going to say the acceleration of A is, well, remember, A was the one that had the two cables running from it, um, and B, B was going to accelerate twice as fast as A, because B is the one hanging. So acceleration of A is one half of the acceleration of B. Okay, so, and the acceleration of B is what we're interested in, because B is the one falling a certain height, remember? So I'm going to take this plug in and go, uh, let's see, what will I do? So we're going to go 2t equals ma, and then instead of plugging in aa, we're going to plug, plug in 1 half ab. So acceleration of b. Okay, this is a little bit of a tricky subscript problem here, but there you go. Um, and then to get something for tension here, to solve this for tension, um, I'm just going to divide this by 2, so tension is 1 fourth mass A acceleration of B, okay? So we can then plug that in up here into this guy. So we're taking the, the equations for the two and linking them together, and what we get is MB times G minus 1 fourth, oops, not 1 half, 
uh, two, 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 one fourth m a wait a minute, okay so m a right m a a b okay that's what we plugged in there equals m b a b okay and this should hopefully be working let's see yeah okay so let's see let's uh collect some terms here we're going to collect all the a's on the right hand side so m b g equals m b a b plus one fourth m a a b and what we should have now i hope am i doing this right um i think so yeah okay this should be right okay so then what we can do is we can uh divide through by mb plus one fourth ma and we can get um mb times g on the right on the left hand side over over mb plus one fourth m a equals a b so i realize that's kind of messy looking um but that's what we get um now probably this is the point to plug in numbers i mean you could keep doing it symbolically and do the the kinematics um symbolically but we're starting to get kind of nasty here so i'm going to switch to oh let's go with green to plug in numbers okay and our numbers from above as we recall um m a equals 10 kilograms mb is 2 kilograms and what else do we need i'm going to use um g equals 10 meters per second squared because i just frankly feel like it okay so um now we've got so mb times g so let's see ab is what we're evaluating for here is going to be um and you know what i'm just going to say i'm just going to define it as i'm going to find plane a as a b because that's the only acceleration we need now okay mb is two kilograms g is 10 meters per second squared so it's going to be two kilograms times 10 meters per second squared over and then two plus uh one fourth times the 10 kilograms okay oh so that's going to be 20 over two plus two and a half so 20 over 4.5 is 40 divided by nine and i'm just going to leave it as a fraction for a moment but meters per second squared so that should be around um acceleration is going to be something like uh yeah so it's going to be like nine four thirty six it's gonna be like four um point four meters per second squared give or take okay that sounds about right okay and so then it's got to fall a distance of four meters so it's going to go down four meters starting from rest v equals zero here we're supposed to find v final so v naught equals zero there v final and t okay so at this point it's pretty easy um this is just kinematics so let's say uh we want to solve for um, t we can use our old uh delta y equals b naught times t uh right plus one half a t squared in this case um you know well now see now i'm using different coordinates again but whatever so we can make it x so we can go back to using um this is x and this is y i'm being really sloppy here but so you're going through a delta x of four meters um your v naught is zero zero plus one half and then your acceleration is i'm gonna stick with this 40 over nine thing okay sorry let's see do, 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 do. okay i'm gonna stick with that 40 divided by nine and then t squared uh is whatever okay so 20 over nine nine over 20 so uh t is going to equal four 
Uh, so this is going to come out to 18. T squared is 18 over 10. Uh, I think that's really right. Yeah, okay. So.